Okay, hello everyone. Um, now, in the last activity, you should have looked at um, what your major is and figured out what the um, expected early career major or salary is for someone with your major, like the average student with your major. Think of that as someone like a B or C student um, graduating from college. And with that degree, that's what they could expect to make as their median salary starting off. And I want you to put that to use, okay? And this, this worksheet hopefully is pretty easy for you to use. What I want you to do to start off is make a copy of it, make your own copy, because this is gonna be for your purposes um, alone, really. So make a copy, again, so what I did there was I took the Google Sheet link that I gave you, and I went File, and then it says Make a Copy. Click Make a Copy, and you can name it whatever you want. So maybe I'll name it my name, and then Millionaire Calculator. And again, you can save this to your Google Drive. Okay. So now here's my copy. And now what I want you to do is just pay attention to these boxes right here. There's only three of them. There's starting salary, savings percentage, and interest rate. Okay. So the one box that you have the biggest control over is the savings percentage. That's where you can really choose for yourself how much you're willing to save every year. Your starting salary is, well, kind of de determined by what your major is and who your employer is, but you have now an idea of what that could be. So what I'd like you to do is put in there what you think you're going to make. Maybe you're a mathematics major and you'll be cl making closer to, well, over $50,000 or something, right? So maybe I put that in there. And then you can put in here your savings percentage. You know, maybe you can go up to closer to 20%. That would be better. And then this is the box that you don't really have control over. This is driven by the market, but this is expected interest rate, or I'm thinking this is expected returns if you were to invest this in the stock market or into bonds or um, a, a, probably a portfolio of both. Usually when you start your first job, you'll have uh, someone come and talk to you about setting up a 401k, and this is what I'm expecting your 401k to get over the life of its, uh, of its 46 years or something, 45 years. So let's start off with an est a conservative estimate of 6%, let's say. And you could go even more conservative if you want. But again, this savings percentage is what you have the most control over. Starting salary, you can negotiate for a better starting salary, especially if you um, major in a more competitive major and do really well in it. You can expect to make more money. And of course, I always advocate that you you try to you try to negotiate for a better salary. Okay, so I've spent about two uh, two almost three minutes talking about just those three boxes. But when you do this, when you plug it in, um, the magic of this this worksheet is that it's it's already got everything set up for you. So as soon as you put in a starting salary of of fifty thousand dollars, it automatically puts that starting salary right there in box B two. And then what goes on in the rest of this column is it just takes whatever happened in the previous cell and it multiplies by 1.01. And what that is, is it's assuming that you're making a 1% raise every year. And so that's just a conservative estimate. Again, you could tweak that and make that 1.02 if you want. Um, but this gives you an idea of, of how easy it is to become a millionaire if you make the right um, decisions early on. So what I've done is I've I've put one through 45 for the for the years of your career. I'm assuming you start working at 22 and end working at 67, you retire 67. And I'm assuming that you start off making $50,000 and at the end of all those 1% raises every year, you end up making $77,000. Again, I think that's kind of a conservative estimate. And what this next uh, column is, is it's annual savings. And so that's just whatever was here times the savings percentage that you entered in there. So that's, I put 18%. Maybe I'll make that 20%. You'll see that the numbers change. Okay. So this is assuming that you make $50,000 and you put aside 20% of your, of your annual salary right from the start. Then you would, at the end of 45 years, you'd have $2.4 million in the bank. Um, let's see. If I go down to 15%, then you would have about $1.8 million in the bank. Okay, so um, that's that. Now, finally, this is the important column. This is the savings, and this is um, this is highlighted with this this dark blue graph here. What this is is this is at the end of the first year, you have $7,500 saved, and then in the second year, that's when the magic happens. Whatever you had saved the previous year, that got multiplied by one plus your interest rate, so 1.06. That's like what the money you got for um, 
loaning your money out to the stock market or buying money in stocks. I guess buying stock in companies, you're really purchasing little pieces of company when you're buying stocks. Um, and then finally, you also got to save the 7575 So at the end of year two, you now have $15,000. And then at the end of year three, what happened? Well, the $15,000 got multiplied by 1.06, and then you got to add another 7650 So now you have $24,000. And this process continues. Again, to make this formula work, all you have to do is click on it and drag it down, and it automatically populates the formula in the next, in the next cell. And so at the very end, you have... 1.829 million dollars so 1.8 million dollars and so let me, i should update this so that this is actually a um, cell so i'm gonna call that what d46 i think was the name of that cell yeah so that's what you have saved after 67 years and again you can see that if you just change the interest rate a little bit if you think you can make seven percent interest then you're up to two point um two point four million dollars and if you got eight percent interest on average you would end up with $3.2 million. So um, it would be nice if we could control this, but we really can't. It's kind of determined by market forces. But again, historic low averages, if you look at like the S&P returns for 40 years at a time, it's typically closer to 10%, um, but it's also riskier. So it depends on how risky you are in your investment choices. But what you do have a choice over is how much you're willing to save. Okay, so just by also tweaking this number, you can get a lot bigger number going from 15 to 20 percent raise you up to 3.2 million dollars um, so that's kind of like up to you what you're willing to save every year and um, and how much you're willing to put aside if you only put aside 10 percent then you're down to 1.6 million dollars even with the seven percent interest rate so that's something to keep in mind so anyways the, the goal here is for you to figure out when you want to retire how much you're expecting to make, how much you're willing to save every year, and then um, and then you should be able to compare and contrast uh, what the different strategies are. Now, the final thing I want you to remember, if you remember nothing else, it's that the money you save in your 20s is the most important money. So making this decision early is really important. I want to show you what happens if you just waited six years. So instead of putting money away right, at, right out of college, you wait a little bit and you think, oh, I want to have fun, I need to go have a vacation or whatever. So I'm going to spend that 7500 on you know, a vacation and a new car or whatever else. How much is it going to cost you? You might look at this and say, well, it's only going to cost me $54,000 because that's how much I had saved at the end of the first six years. But that's not true because this money here, even though it's a small amount, gets to get compounded. It gets to get multiplied by itself 1.07 year after year after year and it compounds and becomes much more. You'll see exactly how much more in a second. So if you look at what happens if you wait and start saving in year seven, well, you might say that's only a difference of 50 something thousand dollars. But if you scroll down here at the bottom, you can see that if you wait six years, then you end up with only $1.6 million. And the difference is what I have right there. That's the difference of E46 minus D46. That's $760,000. So by waiting six years, you cost yourself three quarters of a million dollars um, of possible wealth just by waiting. Okay, so that $54,000 turned into um, 70, a quarter of a million dollars through the magic of compound interest. Okay, so hopefully this is kind of exciting for you because you can see that even if you're only making $30,000 a year, you still can become a a millionaire by the time you retire if you work a 45 year career and you put aside 15 percent even I think if you put aside 10 10 percent you're making almost a million dollars so let's see what you'd have to put aside I guess you'd have to put aside 11 percent every year even if you're only starting off at a salary of thirty thousand dollars and that's if you end up making fifty or forty five thousand dollars so even basically anyone in this class is gonna be making more than this um, both in starting salary and in final salary, and yet um, if they start putting 10% away or 11% away every year and they get a reasonable return on their investment, they're going to end up being millionaires. So hopefully that's pretty exciting for all of you. All right, thanks. Have a good day.